praise the name of the Lord. We are heirs of the Father. We are joint heirs with the Son. With the Son. We are children. To Jesus, Satan, leave me alone. I am married to Jesus. This man, don't know how to play it. we thank you Lord thank you for Jesus being the husband of the church and thank you also Lord for the misery of marriage to you O Lord be glory in Jesus name Father speak to our heart today grant unto us to understand the miseries of God from the pages of the scriptures in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ thank you Father in Jesus mighty name we pray let's say a better amen. amen and let's have a seat you are welcome in Jesus name I know that some married men who had that song today will reflect and remember that maybe one time or the other their wives have told them Jesus Christ is my husband any man that recognized or resonated with that don't mind your wife who's sitting beside you Raise up your hand. Let me see. God bless you. Who else again? Anytime they tell you, Jesus is my husband, you tell them you are not telling like You are a liar. Jesus is not your husband. Jesus is the husband of the church. I am your... I didn't hear you. Uh -huh. Thank you, my brother. I've heard you. Brethren, I am going, well, I'm going to trust God that today... We will do it in such a way that everyone in the house, you are going to be blessed. Because if I'm just speaking in terms of marriage, excluding the, those, those who are still young, who are not married yet, then we have not completed the assignment. But yet, we are still going to be talking about the standard scriptural pattern for marriage and how you get into it. How many of you want to remind me what was the first lesson? Uh, follow the pattern number one. Uh -oh. Are you just coming here to enjoy listening? The importance of patterns to God. And I told you, it is set in heaven. God cannot change his own plan. It is you that must conform to the pattern. What is number two? Somebody was born again here. You saw how God worked for him after being born again? 
You don't get my joke. Oh my God. When the man was properly born again, before the wallet got... Are you getting it now? So you better be born again properly well. So that heaven can speak for you. So the pattern of how to come into the body of Christ. That was number two. What was number three? Pattern of service. And the summary of it was this. Very clear. God is looking to make expression of himself upon the face of the earth. Ministry is not about you coming to show off here. No, sir. Ministry is God being able to pass through you to show himself to the world. Are we together? What was number four? Pattern of how to finish well. And two, one thing rolled into two. One is the fact that the pattern of how, not, to, not only to finish well, how to be sure that um, you will enter. No, no. I put it to you in one way. That out the pattern of how to serve God comfortably. Sorry, what? In the presence of God and to be sure and guarantee that you will finish well. And we say the fruit of the Spirit is the key. And when you combine it very well, it becomes a lamp and the oil that the master is looking for in order to open the door. Are we together? So today, we are going into pattern of God for marriage. Genesis chapter number 2, verse 18. Genesis chapter 2, verse number 18. I will read to us. And the Lord God said... It is not good that the man should be alone. I will make him and help meet for him. Verse 20 to 25. Verses 20 to 25. And Adam gave names to all cattle and to the fowl of the air and to every beast of the field. But for Adam there was not found and help meet for him. And the Lord God caused a deep sleep to fall upon Adam, and he slept. And he took one of his ribs and closed up the flesh instead thereof. And the rib which the Lord God had taken from man made he a woman and brought her unto the man. Verse 23. And Adam said, This is the flesh of my flesh, and she shall be... Sorry, and Adam said, this is now bones of my bones and flesh of my flesh. And she shall be called woman because she was taken out of man. Therefore shall a man leave his father and his mother and shall cleave unto his wife and they shall be one flesh. And they were both naked and the man and his wife were not ashamed. Now, brethren, God was the one that saw Adam's loneliness and isolation. And he came up with the plan known and referenced as marriage. Brethren, God is the author of marriage, not man. The institution of a man and a woman coming together was authored by God. That's why when you look at that verse number 18, he says, I will make him and help meet for him. That was God's intention, and he did it. So it was not of any man. It was not man-made. It is God's made. Number two, God institu instituted marriage for companionship. Listen to me very well. The, the issue of marriage did not come up immediately or initially because of procreation. Procreation came in afterwards, which is still part of God's plan. So please, I want you to take note in that verse number 18 that we read. And the Lord God said, it is not good for him to be alone. Loneliness, isolation was an issue. And God brought a woman into his life. Why? Because man, it's not good for man to be alone. You know what that is telling you? Don't wake up and tell me because you cannot give birth to a baby for me, I'm going to divorce you. 
It doesn't work. That is not the pattern of heaven. The pattern of heaven did not tell you that I'm going to give you a wife because you are going to have a child. Some of you might be looking at me now and say, Pastor, does it mean that if I don't have a child, I should just stay there like that? That's not what I'm saying. I'm only telling you that's not a ground to say I'm walking away. It is not allowed. And God will help us in Jesus' name. Now, number three I want to point out to you is that God made woman out of man. You see, that's why we can say that it is a bone of my bone or flesh of my flesh. So when you are going to pray, don't think in your head how God is going to do it. You will tell God, Father, please give me a bone of my bone and that of my body. Give it to me. How God will locate it is not your business. It is the business of God. Like he did in, in Ezekiel chapter 37 from verses number 1. The Bible says the, when the man prophesied, the bones started relocating to one another. They located one another. The joints were locating sockets. How they identify the bones that belongs to them, you don't know. I think it's Ecclesiastes chapter number, is it number 12 now, verse number 3. It says to me that we do not understand the mysteries of how bones are formed in the womb of a woman. So you don't know the way of the spirit. So you need to understand that that is what God wants to do and he will do so. That is why when you pray, you can pray as such. Now, number four, God brought the woman, that is the wife, to the man. I'm, I'm starting from this point so that all our young adults in the house also can understand the mysteries of God. Who brought the woman to the man? God. God will bring you to your man. You are not, you are not, <laughs> your faith is not strong enough. Oh. Don't worry, I'll give you another opportunity. God will bring you to, will bring you to your man. In the name of Jesus Christ. Let me pray it in a better way. By force, by fire. By the Holy Ghost. Huh? God will bring you to your man. And your man will not be able to reject. You see, the people here, because they don't know, they are not saying amen yet. Who was the father of Adam? God. If you check the scripture very well in Luke chapter number 3 verse 33. No, verse 38 now. Luke chapter 3 verse 38. You will see where God reference, uh, the scripture reference God as the father of Adam. Now listen to my statement. His father brought him a wife. His father brought him a wife. May God give you understanding. So that our parents will understand the role they have to play in getting the right wife for their sons. You have a role to play. You cannot just be quiet. He said, but that's not my business. It's not my, me. It's my, it's my husband's business. I will show you also from the scripture. It is your business as a woman. To get the right husband, uh, the right wife for your son. Is there. We will see. See, when the scripture says that he brought the woman, that's why ultimately God is our father. God will bring you to your husband. And God will bring your wife to you in the name of Jesus Christ. I'm sure somebody is going to quote to me, the Bible says he that findeth a wife. Can you find anything that God has not given you? It's not possible. Except the Lord build the house. The scripture says they labor in vain. You will not labor in vain. As you pray, the heavens will open up on your life. In the name of Jesus Christ. So it was the Lord that out of the man brought out a bone and then fashioned out a woman and brought her unto the man. The Lord will do so for us in Jesus' name. When you look at Genesis chapter 24, in verse number 4, somebody did something, Abraham. The scripture said when it was time for Isaac to get married, he called the servant, 
the Eliezer of the house or the Gehazi of the house. He said, my son is due for marriage and I need a woman, a father, rising up again. Are you seeing it in the scripture? A father rising up. I'm not saying you should go and look and say, okay, I want this one. I want that one. No. What the father must do is to stand in the gap and begin to cry, father, the woman that this my son will find will be from God. And that is why you should build confidence in your son to the point that when he or she finds one, huh? when he finds one, let me use that word, he will make sure he comes to you and say that this is what I found. Because what your son cannot see, you will see it. They may be infatuated because of the beauty. But you will see beyond the beauty. I said, no. I have been in this matter for more than 40 years. I can see. And you say, Daddy, what are you talking about? Say, my son, you can't go this route. This is what you need to do. And blessed is that son that will listen to his father at that point in time. May you receive grace to listen to your father. And may you receive grace to listen to your mothers. That amen is weak. Don't worry. Open your Bible with me. Ruth chapter number two. Chapter number three, please. Ruth chapter number three. Because I want to establish it to you that your parents still have a role to play because they now represent your father in court as God did unto Adam. Look at chapter verse number one. The Bible says, Then Naomi, Ruth chapter, one, chapter three, verses one to four. Then Naomi, her mother-in-law, said unto her, My daughter, Shall I not seek rest for you that it may be well with thee? And she now went ahead to describe Boaz, is our kindred, who with whose maiden thou was be, be, that was. Behold, in Winwet Bali to, tonight in the threshing floor, verse number three, wash yourself therefore and anoint thee, and put thy raiment upon thee, and get thee down to the floor. But make not thyself known unto the man until she, until he shall have done eating and drinking. And it shall be when he lieth down that thou shalt mark the place where he shall lie. And thou shalt go in and uncover his feet and lay thee down and he will tell thee what thou shalt do. Let me explain it to you. Because we are reading parables. Ruth was a Moabite. She has no clue of the practice in Israel. And now her husband had died. And, she, and Naomi told her, you don't need to come with me. Because if you come with me, there is no proof that there's no hope that I can get you a husband. Because she knew it is a responsibility on her. You know, I told you, both father and mother should wake up and monitor what they do. Because when, the, when a one, one funny man comes into your house and all he does is to wear one stiletto and he doesn't even know how to say good afternoon and he comes to look for your daughter, one of those days you are going to call your daughter, my, my daughter, shine your eye. This one you are going after. There is no tomorrow here. How many daughters have said that before? You don't want them to know? Raise up your hand and let's, let them know. Don't worry yourself. Ah, Nobody is raising up. You are not, okay, knock your head like this. I can see some head. Hallelujah. We are establishing pattern. You see, the lady now said, I will tell you what to do. The people in Israel, they know the implication of what I'm going to tell you to do. He said, tonight, when you go back into their camp, look for where the man called Boaz is going to lie down. When he lies there, don't worry yourself. Go by the side of his two feet, somewhere there. And then the man normally, I mean, in Israel, you cover yourself with cover clothes, you call it. You say, you just uncover his feet. That speaks volume. There was no way Ruth will know how to do it. But look at the mother, wanting to get the best for her. Say, this is what you should do. When you do it, you will find a husband. So I'm establishing from the scripture to you, God will get you your wife. And when it comes to fathers, 
God was his father. And the fathers on earth, also you have a role. He said to Gehazi, Eliezer, go and get me a wife for my son. That was a responsible father. And a responsible mother will say, will I not give you a place of rest? Will I not look for a place for you to call your own home like I have called this place my home? And he said, do this is what you should do. Listen to your fathers, listen to your mothers, particularly when they are children of God. They know how to guide you into your destiny in the name of Jesus Christ. Let's move forward. The only one that you want, that you like, I will give it to you also. You can equally find one. Proverbs chapter 18, verse 22. You can find one. As a man. This online dating thing. God have mercy on you. If you date online, may you not divorce online. There is no amen. amen. You see, online is hiding a lot of stuff. Oh. Do you know that I've seen ladies? Okay, I've seen men also. When you see the hair, you know it is just a um, passport photograph that you see at some point. And you know ladies can be very wonderful. When they take care of that head like this, you will not know what is in the body. It is the day you will say the first, let's meet first and foremost. Meanwhile, you have said, I will marry you head and tail. And you just located that lady. Say, are you sure you are the one? I am the one now. Don't I look like the one on the internet? May God deliver us. What internet will cost and website dating will cost. Excuse me, where you date on internet? Hey, I'm not approving it to you. I'm only telling you, when you date on the internet, tell the man, I'm not going to date you finally yet. <laughs> I want to see you life. Not only see life, I want to understand who you are. Otherwise, I've not seen it in the scripture that we can do online. Maybe in the days of the scripture, there was no internet. Don't worry. Uh, men have invented so many things, but God will guide us. Am I saying you cannot find yourself on the internet? You can, but be careful. Be very careful. And the Lord will help us in Jesus' name. Now, let me go to the next one. In Genesis chapter 24, verse number 4, I love the statement of um, Abraham. He said, But thou shalt go unto my country, and to my kindred, and to take a wife unto my son Isaac. Very clearly, do not marry from Egypt. Whenever I say Egypt, I'm talking about people of strange language. You don't belong to them, they don't belong to you. If you marry from Egypt, there is only one thing I can guarantee you. Your father-in-law is the devil. It is very clear. That's why 2 Corinthians chapter 6 verse number 14. 2 Corinthians chapter 6 verse number 14 has this to say, be not unequally yoked with unbeliever brethren. Don't do it. The servant of Abraham said to him, if the lady refuses to come, should I take your son to that place? He said, don't ever try it. And I'm warning you also, don't say, hey, I've stayed for too long. All the boys in the house, in, the, in Overcomers, they are too young for me. I'm older than them. Therefore, I'm going into Egypt to look for a partner. It is not allowed. According to the pattern of the scripture, don't be unequally yoked with unbeliever. Don't say, Pastor, we have been friends. And I know the way it is coming, is coming to church gradually, gradually. By the time I, I mean, the Bible says, don't you know that the believer can sanctify the unbelieving one? Excuse me, sir. It doesn't work that way. If you bring that kind of prayer request to me and say, Pastor, can you agree with me that when we marry, it will be converted? I will say you are on your own. I won't waste my anointing on that. I will tell you to go and look for the one whose father-in-law is already God. Yes, that's what you need. And God will help you. We are tracing the scripture. Don't worry, married fellow, we are coming. We are just coming gradually so that we can get there at the same time. So that the Lord will minister to somebody in the house. Please, brethren, do not marry an unbeliever. There is nothing righteousness has to do with unrighteousness. 
And there is no communion between light and darkness. That is what you have in that 2 Corinthians chapter number 6, verse 14. Please make sure you are, you are, you are on top of it. Now, Number, the next one I want to mention to you, when it comes to pattern of marriage in the scripture, it is one man, how many wives? One. One man, one wife. He said, but pastor, what about David? What about uh, Absalom? What about Solomon? Excuse me. That's not my business. My business is now. When Jesus Christ told them, Matthew chapter 19, verse number 5, he said it very clearly. The two shall become one flesh. Not the three, not the four, not the five, not the six shall become one flesh. The two, one plus one is equal to what? And when he brought, when he brought uh, Mrs. Eve, to, to, to Adam. How many Eves were brought? So, understand very well. God will help you. So, when you understand that, you will not go wrong. Before you cry to heaven, heaven will answer you. But if you, if you do it wrong, that is where you have to fast and pray and fast and pray before your eyes open and will tell you this is what is wrong. Then when you now get what is wrong, you now correct it before you now get an answer. But when you have done the right thing, one man, one wife. You say, Pastor, hey, in our country where we came from, we always have its polygamous affair. Sir, this is the scripture. The two shall become one flesh. The next thing I want to mention is that God made a woman for Adam, not another man. It is not Jack and John. It is either Jack and what? Jane. And not Jane and what? Are we, are we getting it? Nobody will tell. You know, some of us, we are now being reoriented that actually it is not the people's problem. It is the way they were born. That is why they have to look for a, the same... Uh, sexual gender and oh, excuse me it was male and female according to the standard of the scripture it is male plus it is not male plus male it is not female plus female and all the diverse dimension that they have taken it to whatever anybody likes let them do the scripture is very clear sir he made he a woman. Verse 22, Genesis chapter 2. Made he a woman. Who made... Now, when you now look at chapter 19, verse 4 of Matthew. Chapter 19, verse 4 of Matthew. And the Bible says, Jesus Christ answered them, Have you not read that he who made them at the beginning made them what? Male and female. I don't have any other story to tell you. The next thing I want to say is this. 1 Corinthians chapter 7, verse 2. That's number 11 point I'm giving you. Because I knew it was going to give me a little bit of challenge. I numbered them. Don't worry yourself. Number 11 I want to give you now is this. Marriage is a covenant union of a man and a woman. I use the word covenant because here the Bible says, let every woman have her own husband. I have had cases of pastors taking care of widow and their wives are at home and they are now sleeping with widow. That is not allowed. The marriage in question now, you know, I'm going to shoot some of you by the hip. Listen to what I want to say now. You see, when we talk about we are married, it's not a matter of prenup, a, a prenuptial agreement. Excuse me, what are you talking about? We are not married. Because when you come to me and say, hey, mommy pastor, before we marry you, before you meet me at all, I have some things that you don't have access to. Who, who, was that how God gave her to the man? He said, you know what? I've created Adam before. All the garden and everything belongs to him. When you are coming in and you are just coming afterwards, there's nothing like that. It is men who have invented so many things. The Bible says God has made all things perfectly well. But man has, done, has brought in many inventions. So you need to be very careful. So if some of you are saying, hey, before we, before we go to the altar, let's do prenup. If you come and tell me that, I will chase you away from my presence. 
Because we are, and when you now come here and you now say for better, uh, say pastor, we have we have agreed. It's for better, for best. Excuse me, I'm going to throw it out. It is supposed to be for better, for what? Uh huh. Even the young adult are responding very well. Look at these people. It's as if, hey, 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 pastor, what you are telling us, you don't know anything. We have tasted it. We know what it is. If I had known, I would have done prenup before. You cannot. It cannot be reversed according to the scripture. Whatever you find, you know, I love using the illustration of Jacob. You know, Jacob and Leah. Jacob said, you covered the wife for me. When I woke up in the morning, it was Leah. I wanted to read the chair. He said, what, you, what is behind the covering is what you have, oh, you cannot go by no exchange for anything. God will help us in Jesus' name. Marriage is a covenant union between a man and a woman. What that means is this. Marriage is not cohabiting. Cohabitation is nothing close to marriage at all, at all. Because we are now living in a world of, say, we have been living together. Uh, because we are living together and we are a couple. Who told you? You are just partners in sin. That's the bottom line. You are just partners in sin. Don't ever allow anybody to cohabit with you, sir. It's not done. The Bible tells me in Ephesians 5, verse number 3. Ephesians 5, number 3. But fornication and uncleanliness or covetousness, let it not be once named among you as become saints. Don't, don't do practice marriage. What is the meaning of that? It's nothing like practice marriage. If you are not, if you have not gone to exchange covenant between yourself in front of an altar or in a, before an authority, and you are living together and you call it practice marriage, no, 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 no. You are just partners in iniquity, partners in sin, and God frowns against it hundred and one percent. You can't play with that, no, sir. It's not allowed, and God will help us in Jesus' name. Your amen is dropping and dropping and dropping. Ah! You see, sexual intimacy in marriage is only allowed for married couple, like I said. Hebrews chapter 13, verse number 4. You see, if we are living in a day where, do you know some, some I think some 10 years ago, thereabout, a lady went to a doctor around here. Of course, we were not here at that time. And one of the one of the one prescription the doctor gave her because of her situation, the doctor asked her, "How active are you sexually?" She, the lady said, "I'm not married. I'm a, I'm a Christian." Ah, he said, "Well, you you need to be sexually active. This kind of a situation about you." She said, "No, I cannot." And when she came to me and she told me all the story, I said, "Don't worry yourself. Leave them. I'm not blaming doctors. Oh, you are only walking according to the principles of this world." It's okay. God will help you. <laughs> but according to heaven, I said, don't worry. You will have a child. All this nonsense they are telling you. She is married. She is gay. She is have, a, have children now. She is no longer in the city of water. So those of you that are calculating your head, where is the fellow? He is no longer in this congregation. Forget it. And the Lord has blessed her. <laughs> so don't worry about that. Trying to look all around. Eh? Your antennas will get the wrong signal. In Jesus' name today. Praise God. So, sexual intimacy is for the married couple, not those of us that are cohabiting all over the place. And I've told you, cohabiting is not according to a scriptural standard. It is wrong. If you are in that chain, get out of it when? God bless you. In Jesus' name. So, please repeat it to me. Cohabiting or dating is not a marriage. It is fornication and God hates it. Please. It must not be mentioned among you. Now, before I move ahead, for those of us that are married, I know I've had people ask so many questions. I'm going to take some few minutes over the time today so that you can understand it. Because we have not even gotten into marriage yet. We are just beside the marriage. Ent application to enter marriage is what we are talking about now. <laughs> According to the scripture. I have heard that you can do anything you like in your bedroom. It's a lie of the devil. Did you hear me? 
It's a lie of the devil to the point that a lot of Christians are now being introduced to useless video. He said, go and practice it in your bedroom. Say, be it's your, yourself and your husband. It is not true. I'll read the scripture to you. When you look at um, Colossians chapter 3, verse 5, I read it in the, I want it in message. I know it is clustered together with uh, verses number, number, let me see. Okay, Give, okay, that's good. And that by, by, and that means killing off every connected, everything connected with that way of death. Sexual promiscuity, impurity, lust, doing whatever you feel like, whenever you like it. Are you getting something? Uh -huh. And grabbing whatever attracts your fancy. That's a life shaped by things and feelings instead of God. Now, what, when you want to do whatever you like, you need to, first of all, ask yourself, what is all of this nonsense? The Bible calls some of them inordinate affection. In the King James Version. Inordinate affection. Spiritually unclean activities. They are forbidden. Never to copy Egyptian practices. I call it in my notes. Don't copy Egyptian practices. How can you? You know, I love one statement that somebody made. He said, people said that the church, the world has come into the church and the church has gone into the world. He said, no, it's not true. It is only the world that has come into the church. The church has not gone into the world because if you have really gone into the world, you will have influenced the world. Is it not true? Most of you, if I begin to examine every one of you from A to Z now, you know that day when we brought our brother here and some of you wanted to volunteer? You remember? And a lady was raising up and said, if I bring you here, you will, you will not come to church again. Because by the time I remove your mascara, I will remove your... So eyelashes and mascaras are different. <laughs> you see now, they know... <laughs> Then I will remove some attachment and I will tell somebody to give me some liquid uh, neutralizer. I said, bring your nail. Because all those things, Baba will remove them because I don't talk about them every day. What's my business? I'm watching you. When God begins to, it's my prayer that God will begin to speak to your heart. But because of time, let's move forward. The Lord will help me today. Sir, brethren, don't practice Egyptian method. So people have been asking questions. Pastor, is oral sex good for Christian? Let me tell you, capital letter, no. It is Egyptian method. They are teaching all of you. Not say, okay, don't worry. If it is your bedroom, you can do it. Excuse me. That's the express way to hell. Even as a child of God. Inordinate affection uncontrollable affection, that everything you want, you just want to do it. Excuse me, instead of God, says the scripture, be careful. That is not part of marriage as designed by God. Now, let's move forward a little bit. Number 15. When you now have gone to the altar, you have exchanged the vow, you have now been married. We are now called husband and wife. Excuse me. The number one instruction to Mrs. Wife is that what? Ephesians 5, verse 22. Be giving us the scripture so that we can see it. It says, Wives, submit. What? <laughs> submit yourself. It is you. We are not going to compel you. So it's just like Jesus Christ said, Take my yoke. You are the one that will take it. It is the woman that we submit herself to who? Can somebody help me in the house? Is there? It's so easy for a woman to say, our father in the Lord, pastor, the Lord bless you, sir. Ah, you are doing wonderfully well. And before you know it, instead of doing like this, they will kneel down to two knees on the ground. Ah, I said, this woman is wonderful. I love women like this. But suddenly I'll just see that same woman. With her husband at home. He said, honey, welcome. Your food is, on the, is in the freezer. I said, excuse me. But you greeted me very well in the church now. The way you greeted me, eh? Greet the man. He said, hey, pastor, don't worry. We'll take care of that one. Okay. I'm not your husband, though. That one 
is your husband. I'm not saying you should not respect pastor, but respect your... Now, submitting, take note, man, listen to this one. Submitting does not mean subjugation. No. No. It doesn't mean that you are going to oppress the woman. No, sir. That's not what it means. It only means that I'm going to defer to your decisions. We are going to defer to your counsel. Women, don't worry. Tell your husband. How many husbands and wives are sitting together? Okay, you know, if you are not sitting together, you can point in that direction. Tell your husband, I will submit to you. Don't worry, I'm telling you. I'm coming to your side, don't worry. You are not doing that. I will submit to you. By force, by force, I will submit to you. Don't worry, we are coming. The scripture says that they should submit to their own husband. Just be subject to them. Why? There's a reason why God will always say, the Bible now says, as unto the Lord. As unto the Lord. So how are you submitting to God? We will see it the way you are submitting to your husband. Are we, are we together this far? The way you submit to your husband will show us how much you submit to God. That is the scripture. We are only reading the scripture out. Of, and we'll get to a point where it talks to both parties. When you look at verse number 24 of the same chapter, the scripture says, Therefore, as the church is subject unto Christ, so let the wives be to their own husband in everything. Sister, listen very well. You will not tell me because the man annoyed you. And then, you know, this is not a marriage counseling. This is just following the pattern. Just come out with what the pattern says. You know, the women have the tendency or they have the capacity not to go into sexual intimacy with their husband for the next one month. They can do it. They say, you will see today. All the women that you are looking at outside there, I will show you. Hey, if you continue to show, you are not subjected to your husband in everything. No. You are disobeying and you are not following the pattern. You say, but pastor, what about if she has annoyed me? Excuse me, annoyance came in the morning. Or maybe your, your husband annoyed you in the morning. This one is in the night. Another chapter has come. Chapter one has ended. This is chapter two or chapter three. Those of you that are saying, I want to go and get married, get ready for it. Too. You have to subject yourself to your husband in everything. It is well with us in Jesus' name. Amen. Number 16, I want to mention to you, we are still going to number 40. God will help you. Don't worry, it's not number 40. I know you will, you will complain. <laughs> I know you will complain. It's not 40, but it's not uh, too close yet. We'll get there. Wife, again, the scripture said to me in 1 Peter chapter number 3, verses number 3 to 4, I want to read. The Bible says, Whose adorning, let it not be that outward, that of outward adorning, of plating the air, and of wearing of gold, and of putting on of an apparel, but let it be the hidden man of the earth, in that which is not corruptible, even the ornament of a meek and quiet spirit, which is in the sight of God of great price. Brethren, what the scripture is telling us here is this. When you look at um, verse number two, the Bible says we should be chaste as women in marriage. That is to say, take care of yourself. But suddenly, the scripture redefined it and say, I am not, even me, I'm not asking you to dress shabbily. No, that's not what I'm saying. And I'm not even trying to tell you to look unpresentable as women. Because, you know, before we got married, honestly, truly, truly, you know, some of you will confess very well. You are always looking pick and pan. Everything is fine. The man always wants to see you. And when you are now married, and the man will say, aren't you going to make your hair? Is it my hair that you marry? <laughs> ah! <laughs> Somebody has said it before. Just do like this. I will see you. Don't let this one see your hand. Oh. Somebody will say, how come you are wearing this baggy dress? That is not to say you should go and wear tight, tight wear all the time. Those clothes are so baggy. You see, but when I, wanted, when I was cutting you, 
you are looking slimmer than this one. He said, what do you mean? Oh, you're telling me I'm fat now? I'm not telling you you're fat. At least, why don't you go to the gym? You will not say, no, 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 no. Excuse me. That is not even what the scripture is saying. I know women, you concentrate on going to do your attachment. You go and do seven hours under the whatever. There's one. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. You spend several hours. But the scripture says, women, it is not for the several hours we are looking at. You see, we are looking at something else. Look at the scripture. The scripture says, let it be that woman in the inside. Beautify your inside. Ornament of a meek and quiet spirit which in the sight of God is of a great price. Because truly, if care is not taken, when you look at an average marriage, who does the talking most? Thank you, you have been sincere. You want to hear your view. You want yourself to be heard all the time. Excuse me, that's not the way to win a man. If you want to win the argument, continue winning the argument, but you will not win your husband. And that's not what you want. The Bible tells us in that scripture, when you go and read it, first, first Peter chapter 3, verses 1 to 7, and a little bit further. He said, even, even Sarah, your mother, whose daughter you are, if you carry the same spirit of meekness and gentility in the inner man, then you are a child of God. And then the scripture says that Sarah will never call her husband. You know, I see, I hear a lot of people call their husband. <laughs> Hey, Shagu. Hey, whatever his name now. Then the new one in time. He said, hey, babe. When, who is babe? Your husband is babe. Lord, miss. The Bible says she couldn't even try to call Abraham by name. She was calling Abraham Lord. Just like you will call Jesus Christ my Lord but don't put my savior for your husband. But I will show you, your husband is your savior. It's in the scripture. In the issue of marriage. That's why I said, women, you better first of all accept your own now. Because when we shift to the men, they must say the same thing to you. Because if you are not saying anything to them, I'm sorry, they won't say anything. Tell your husband. I will submit to you, don't worry. Sharp, sharp. Huh? Nobody, no husband in the house. Maybe I should have brought husband and wife together. I think I need to bring some chairs. Don't worry. I'm taking 10 more minutes. Can we relocate? Where our husband is in the house? Your wife is not with you. Where are you? If your own husband, your wife is not... Sir, pastor, a brother, carry your chair. Go that side. <laughs> or you can bring your chair. No, you can take your chair. That door is allowed. Excuse me, Mrs. Pastor. Bring your chair here. Where is another chair? Sister Abusala. Ah. Doctor. Carry your chair, go and meet your wife. The chair is allowed to carry chair now. Let's do that very quickly. Where is your husband? My dear sister, you are looking for your husband, have you? Is he there? I will bring him here today. Uh -huh. I want to, you see, just be looking at that direction because example, I want you to see example now. Amen. The Lord will help us in Jesus' name. I let you go, where is your, oh, okay, the woman is there. You escaped today. Excuse me. Tell your husband. I will submit to you. Do it. Don't worry yourself. Uh -huh. It is well in Jesus' name. God will help us. Number what am I now? Number 17. Very quickly. Husband is the head of the wife. Husband, tell your wife now. I am the head. Don't worry. Just hear it. Hair does, what does hair do in our body? It, it, co it coordinates, right? When the head is not able to coordinate, what do you say is the head? Ask your, <laughs> I told you, my husband, you will coordinate me. Why are you laughing at me? But you need to be correct, oh. Will you be a correct head? Who is winning now? The woman or the man? <laughs> God, let's draw. They said, listen to me. You see, brethren, when the wife, the Bible tells me in that 
I will read that scripture to you now. Ephesians 5, verse 23. That is the standard in the scripture. Ephesians 5, 23. The Bible says, For the husband is the head of the wife, even as Christ is the head of the church. And what? You see what I said? My Lord and my Savior. If anything goes wrong with the body, who do we blame? You see, the woman has no problem. I have submitted to the head. Excuse me. When you want to cross the road, huh, what determines it is time to cross? So when you get the queue, the, head, the queue, C-U-E, huh, and the head says it is time to cross, what happens to the body? It moves. So if you tell me anything is wrong with your wife, where is something wrong? You see women are talking now. <laughs> it is the pattern that we are showing one another. Because when the pattern says, submit to the head, if any part of the body, if I am touching a hot water, for example now, on the stove, and I refuse to coordinate with the head, my hand will be in the water, it will get burned, several things will go wrong. But if there is still coordination between me and my head, and I've submitted, the signal will go up and return and say, remove your hand. And I will do so. Are, are, we, are we talking to one another? I know I'm taking your time, but we are just being practical here today. Thank God, this is the last session of uh, following the pattern. So I can go and rest. But you need to hear this one. See, brethren, when it comes to the issue of man and a woman, please learn the secret of submitting to the head that is supposed to coordinate. But let me tell you one secret. Do you know the body is the one that processes everything you are going to eat? So that they will say, it is, you are what you eat. So if the body processes well and we good enough, they are the one in the kitchen. And that takes care of it. So they give you whatever you like. How many times? Ah! I don't want to talk today. How many times? <laughs> how many times have you eaten what you like? Or what you, they, they say you must eat? Anybody? In <laughs> Let's not go that side today. But it's part of the ah, pattern. This pattern is serious. Though. Sometimes I just gentle. I say, okay, no problem. Let me just say. <laughs> Brethren, in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, the Lord will keep our marriages in Jesus' name. Why are you laughing? We are only dictating pattern to you. And all of, even the camera lady is laughing. Say, God will help me today. <laughs> but let, let's quickly move forward. Number 18, wives must love their husbands. Please, don't forget that. And the children, Titus chapter number 2, verses 4 to 5. It is part of the pattern. You must love them. Then, you must love your husband and love your children. Titus chapter number 2, verses 4 to 5. Just take that reference. But I want to push further a little bit. Husband must love their wives as Christ loved the church. Ephesians chapter 5, verse 25. Put it on the screen for us, please. Ephesians 5.25. Let's read it together. Wife, I want you to read it too. Look at it now. What did he say? That's the pattern. Husband, do what? Tell, oh, hold on there. My husband. The, the pattern says you must love me. Tell your husband. Did you hear that? Uh -huh. Let's go. Love your wife. Even as what? Love the church. How did Christ love the church? What does it mean to give yourself for it? Ah, this woman, this woman are dangerous here. Yeah. <laughs> Sir, tell your husband, <laughs> is there? The Bible says you must be ready to die for me. They cannot tell their husband, look at them. <laughs> they are afraid. It is the pattern. My duty is to submit to you. When anything is going wrong and somebody has to die. <laughs> Excuse me, who is supposed to die? <laughs> you see women are willing to let the husband die. They will remain alive. <laughs> God will forgive you. <laughs> but it only tells you that the pattern in the scripture is that the man should be able to go the extra mile. Then I have a question for you. At what point did Christ die for the body? 
You see where we are pushing the pattern to now? Romans chapter number 5. It's there. What did he say in verses 6 to 8? He said, why we are yet sinners? When it appears that if the woman refused to submit, he said, I'm not going to listen to you. Are you, are you my father? The scripture still said, you have entered it. It's a matter of covenant relationship. You will still go ahead to say, I will endure until I am able to win you back. The church was not perfectly what you wanted it to be when he died. So the woman may not be perfectly what you want her to be before you quickly uh, say, okay, don't worry. I will endure. I will, give the, I, will, I will give the sacrifice so that we can still remain together. God will help me. Let me see how far I can quickly jump. Number what did I say now? 17? Ah, 18 now. 19 tells me that I told you that I've done, I've done 19 for you, brethren. I said that the, the 19 is the one that the husband should be ready to love the wife as Christ loved the church and gave himself for it. Now, let's jump to number 20. Husbands should nurture their wives. This one is very key. Ephesians chapter 5, verses 26 and 27. Ephesians chapter 5, verses 26 and 27. That he might sanctify and cleanse it with the washing of water by the word, that he might present it to who? To himself. That's the pattern of marriage. To himself. That he might present it to himself. A glorious church, not having spot or wrinkle or any such thing, but that it should be holy and without blemish. What am I trying to pass across to you? Sir, when you get married this year, you go, you know, somebody will tell you, you marry the most beautiful woman on earth. Excuse me, next month. You are going to see a lady that appears prettier and more beautiful than your wife. Are you getting my point? Does that mean you are going to change your wife? No. What the scripture says is that Jesus Christ, the way he treated the wife, you know, we talk, we tell, we are talking about misery, misery of Christ, is that the, he might present it to himself. What did he do in the previous verse, verse 26? He will first of all sanctify the wife and clean up the wife and then present it to himself. That tells you, husband, you are going to have to nurture that woman to become what you want her to be. That's when you will now see people telling you, ah, yourself and your husband, you look alike. It's not that they look alike. It's because the man had worked on the woman that when they, they ask the woman a question, she gives an answer, they go and ask the husband. I say, how come the two of you are giving the same answer? It's because the man has done some cleansing. He has done some nurturing and has presented the woman to has himself such that there is no amount of one useless Jezebel lady coming from anywhere. And say, hey, can't you see me? Don't we look nice? And you do like this. As a secretary in the office, they say, hey. the man will say, if you like secretary yourself, go back and forth and up and down. My wife is still my wife. Can you get out of this office? And the lady will say, ah, whereas everybody admired me outside there. Why not you? It is because the man has not shot his own wife to what he wanted. And he has seen what he desired. So no matter how slim or figure eight you are or fat you become, out there, it doesn't concern him. He will not even see it. That is why it is called marriage according to pattern. If you follow this pattern, no other woman outside there can draw your attention away. Even at old age. Are we together? Who am I speaking to at this point? I didn't hear you. Okay, tell your husband. It's you. Because it's the husband that does that. Are, are, we, are we together? That's why you cannot come to me and say, Pastor, I want to divorce. I will first of all ask you, excuse me, did you open your eyes? Who gave you the woman? Then I'll wait for you to say, hey, God. You want to say God? Oh, so God has gone wrong now. 
That's what I'm going to ask you. So we need to see from the pages of, I'm not preaching today, I'm only pointing scriptures out to you. Because if I begin to preach, you say, Pastor, you want to kill all the men? No. It is what the scripture demands. I think we should stop here. You said no. Married ones want to go home. <laughs> Number 21. The scripture says, husband must dwell with their, hus- with their wives according to knowledge. First Peter chapter 3, verse 7. Dwell with them according to knowledge. What does that mean for you? According to the pattern of, the, of, the, of God, it is you, husband, that must study your wife. How many of you believe with me? Men, you should be able to tell me. How many of you believe with me? No two women are ever the same. I'm not talking about physical appearance. Forget about that one. In conduct and disposition, they are never the same. If somebody says, this is what I do for my wife, and she's listening to me, excuse me, go and study your own wife. Dwell with them according to knowledge. That woman or that man's wife probably wakes up like five o'clock in the morning to take care of the house. He say, all of you, 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 you are here. You'll be waking up at uh, 10 o'clock in the morning. Every woman wakes up five o'clock. Can't you wake up five o'clock? Excuse me, your house will scatter. Maybe in her own biology or chemistry, she wakes up at 10 o'clock. Okay. And she wants to work until 2 o'clock. Leave her. As long as the work gets done. You have studied your own wife and you are not comparing her to anybody. Grass is always, always appear greener on the other side. Though. For all you care to know, that your neighbor is also shadowing your own grass that you think is filled with weeds. Study your own wife. And then, like somebody said this one time, he said, make it a department. A department to study. When you study it very well, according to various curriculum, and you know her in and out. So if anybody tells you any story, say, I know my wife. She can't do that. This is what she will do. And truly, they discover that that's what she was going to do. Then that man has passed. According to pattern. But finally, on that note, why are we going round, round, round like this? Marriage is a mystery. It's a mystery that God used to replicate the relationship of the church and Christ. To tell you that Christ has gone all the way. Remember what I told you. There is all, when you say there's a pattern, there is a pattern in heaven first that was shown to Moses. And you have to replicate it here. If in the process of replicating it here, you are just some one or two things here, what are you trying to tell God? About the ones there. That he should change it. Is he going to change his own? Which one was to change? So I'm telling you also the pattern in heaven is what God has designed that there will be Christ and there will be a church and there will be a marriage between the two of them. But I'm going to replicate it upon the face of the earth so that they can see what I am planning for them. God cannot change that. This is the one here that must conform to that. So that they will know. So when they see husband and wife, say, wow, I, I wish my husband is like this. You will tell them, no, it is Christ in us that has made us like this. And we are representing the relationship of Christ to the church. When you give your life to Jesus Christ and your husband gives life his life to Jesus Christ and you now come together, you will reflect what we are reflecting. Because it's a pattern of God. That's all. Let's move forward a little bit very quickly. I will stop now. What is the pattern of God when it comes to divorce? Because some of you might say, oh, pastor, you have talked about before marriage. Marriage. And so what happened? Forever. The scripture said to me, what therefore God has joined together, let no man put us under. There is no way you can come to me and say God is speaking to me now. I need to divorce. Are people divorcing? Yeah, that's okay. It's not my business. But I'm only outlining the pattern for you. What does the scripture say? Matthew chapter 19, verse 6. 
Matthew chapter 19, verse 6. I've quoted it for you now. Let no man put asunder. And they, the Pharisees and the Jews of those days, they asked Jesus Christ. Sorry, I'm taking your time today. We're almost done. They asked Jesus Christ. Moses told us. Moses told us that we can divorce our wife for every cause. And I love the answer of Jesus Christ. Let's look at it. Verse number 7. Matthew 19, verse number 7. Matthew 19, verse number 7. They said to, to him, they say unto him, why did Moses then command to give a writing of divorce and to put away, to put her away? He said unto them, hear this one now. They wanted to change the pattern and the master now said, Moses, because of the hardness of your heart, you always want to pressurize Moses to do your bid. The Bible says he, he allowed you to give them a putting away, a writing of, di writing of divorcement. But I love verse number eight. He said unto them, Moses, because of the hardness of your heart, and the, okay, let me read it exactly. Moses, because of the hardness of your heart, suffered you to put away your wives. But look at the next phrase. But from the beginning, the pattern did not allow such thing. What the pattern allowed is that you must stay with your wife. That is God for you. You know, some of you, you have told me, what about 1 Corinthians chapter number 7, verse 15, that says, if the unbelieving depart, excuse me, that tells me that you are married to an unbeliever. It's only unbelieving the scripture is talking about there. If it's an unbeliever, I don't have, any, I don't have anything to say. But if the two of you are believers, and somebody is now telling, get out, get out. Okay. If the fellow refuses to listen, there's nothing we can do. But take notes. The pattern says, God does not want it. Because every time you separate like that, and you go and remarry, the Bible says you are committing adultery. It's a scripture. May God help us. Finally on that, the scripture says to me, God says, I hate divorce. Malachi chapter 2, verse number 16. Brethren, God will not subscribe to any other pattern that is different from what we have run through today. Not exhaustive though, because I didn't have much time to explain everything. But what I want you to know, please brethren, make up your mind. No matter what is going on in between you and your, and your husband or in between you and your wife, Look into the scripture. Ask yourself, what has the scripture got to say about it? And if the two of you are not able to come to town, come to your pastor. Let's see the scripture. Even if we cannot come to town at that point, at least you have done your best. Let the heaven know that you have done your best. Then if somebody says, I'm after, I have to go, we will count that fellow as an unbeliever that wants to depart. And you stay on your course. That's a life. Don't ask me to come and teach you another one. Go and digest the five lessons. And go and embrace it. Then your life will never remain the same. Because at that time you will be working according to pattern. Yes, I have taken your time today. Um, we are sorry for that. Don't worry. But because we just have to conclude it. Then move into another dimension. Shall we bow down our head please? I want you to say to God, Father, I know that marriage is a misery and it is for keeps for every child of God. I receive grace to keep mine so that I will showcase the union of Christ and the church. I want my life to demonstrate that Jesus Christ is coming back for the church. I want my relationship to showcase to the world that Jesus Christ loved the church. And for those of us who are not married, why don't you talk to God and say, Father, lead me aright. Bring me, to, take me to the husband or bring my wife to me. Grant unto me, O God, to be a reflection of your glory, a reflection of your beauty, a reflection of your counsel. Don't let me miss it. And as you are praying, I want you to pray for those who appear to have missed it. 
Though we are not saying they have missed it, they appear to have missed it. Say, Father, any relationship that is having issues, that is having one challenge or the other, we pray and plead that, Father, you will intervene. You will intervene for them so that they can become an example of Christ and the church. That in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, we will follow this pattern to the glory and praise of your name. And finally, why don't you pray and say, Father, as many marriages that will be solemnized in this church, we commit into your hand. Give them the grace to be able to follow the pattern and to follow the purpose and the counsel of God. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, so shall it be in Jesus' mighty name we pray. In Jesus' name we pray. Praise the name of the Lord.